Normally we don't pay too much attention to spider mites in corn and soybean, but this extremely drought stressed summer is perfect for exponential growth of the two spotted spider mite. First, I'll start off with identification of this mite. Adults are less than one millimeter in length or 1 20th of an inch. So some people have trouble seeing spider mites with the naked eye. You may need the aid of a hand lens to see spider mites. Use a 10 to 15 X magnifying lens to distinguish mites from other common pests. Spider mites are round in shape, hairy, and tan in color. Adults will have two dark spots on the body, as the common name suggests. A good way to get a search image for just how small two spotted spider mites are is to shake a leaf on a piece of paper and literally watch for specks of dirt to start moving around. Second is where to look for mites. They have a wide host range and can be found in grassy and weedy areas surrounding field crops. They don't have wings, but can use the wind to move short distances to fields. Once in corner soybean, they prefer to feed on the undersides of leaves and in the lower part of the canopy. They especially like dry and dusty areas to start building colonies. So if you are wondering where to look for spider mites, scout at the field edges first. If you can easily find mites in the edge rows, move to the field interior and sample again. The third point is the damage potential of spider mites. They can significantly reduce yield in corn and soybean. Mites damage plants by removing plant sap, like aphids and leafhoppers. Damaged leaves have reduced photosynthesis and uncontrolled water loss. Eventually, the leaves will become stippled and discolored, which is obvious from the top side of the leaf. Sometimes this damage can be mistaken for drought or deficiencies. Spider mite colonies are often surrounded by silken webs. Infested plants look dirty and are covered with webs and cast skins. Mites will move to the upper part of the canopy to feed on fresh leaves. Many people are asking me about economic thresholds for spider mites in corn and soybean. However, there isn't a specific mite density that justifies a treatment. Instead, use your judgment on declining plant quality. If mites are colonizing plants in the field interior and discoloration is obvious in the lower canopy, consider an application. If a treatment is warranted based on declining plant quality, we highly recommend the use of organophosphates for the first application. Why use organophosphates? Based on information from southern states with more persistent spider mite problems, we see better efficacy or knockdown of nymphs and adults, better coverage under hot temperatures compared to pyrethroids, some pyrethroids flare populations, so the reproductive rate actually increases after an application. And some spider mite populations are resistant to pyrethroids. I recommend using a single mode of action rather than tag mixing. If a second application is needed, consider switching chemistries. I really appreciate you watching this short video about spider mite management in Iowa this year. Good luck out there.